Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my three week challenge video. It's a challenge I set myself just after Christmas to build a new account and to see what I could get done in three weeks. The idea behind the video was I, I've just been hearing a massive outpouring for months now of people that can't get stuff done, too grindy, never been into a raid, can't do use that weapon in a night vault because I don't have it. And it got me questioning how difficult it was to do all this. So rather than just build an opinion of myself, you know, of whether it was true or not, I decided to find out. So I set myself a couple of goals for this challenge. So this is an account that's never played Destiny 2 ever. The challenge was to get as close to 6.50 in three weeks as I could. Play as much of the game as possible. Get as many of the pinnacle weapons as possible. I couldn't tell anybody that I LFG'd because I couldn't solo anything that I didn't feel the normal player could. Not that I'm abnormal, but I do a lot of solo work. So people that don't solo stuff, if they couldn't do this solo, I couldn't. So Nightfalls, 100Ks, I do guides for those, so I, I felt comfortable that other people could do those. Everything else was LFG. And I couldn't tell people it was a challenge. I had to act like this is my account. I'm coming in noobish, if you like. So the way this video is going to work is I'm just going to speak a bit about what i done and any hints and tricks that I used or any experiences I had. And what you will see is this is my character. This is me building the character. I wanted to see... Uh, I wanted to see what that boost done. I didn't actually use it, but I did for the second character. This one, I played through all the campaigns, done everything. So every clip you see between now and the end of week one is what I achieved in the first week. Campaign, Whisper, Solo Nightfall. So what I used to, to propel myself up, because at the end of week one, I managed to get my character to just... I think 600 at the end of week one. Fire team medallion is your friend. Every time you get a prime, go and hand it in. Try and farm, you know, off your first character. It's hard to farm uh, fire team. Because uh, uh, I was trying to just do things legitimately. So I don't want to employ any tricks or anything that anybody else had done. I just wanted to play the game. They've increased the drop rate of prime engrams until you hit 600. But I didn't feel it. I was still getting my normal 3 to 4. Some days I'd get 5. So, but Iron Banner did help. Iron Banner was on the week I started this challenge. And that helped. Iron Banner was also on the last week of the challenge. And that didn't help at all. It gave me nothing I needed. I was a little bit gutted. But as you can see, I hit 600 in the end of week 1. I've got the Polaris Lance. I've got the Sleeper. Uh, in week one, I got Polaris Lance, Sleeper, Sturm, Maida, Whisper. Mm, the other thing I wanted to do was obviously beat the two raids, the Leviathan, Last Wish. I, I didn't include Scourge because I, I see Scourge as, although it's pretty cool and I have beat it on Xbox, it's, it is pretty cool but it's still kind of a glorified raid layer. So I was on about the Pinnacle raids. The, the original raids. So in week two, the first thing I'd done on my, my powerfuls on my Titan, and I created a Hunter because Hunters are really good in Crucible, and I just wanted to have a Hunter. I really enjoy Hunters. There, there are too many of them in Crucible, to be fair. But then again, there's too many Luna, Lunas, and there's too many Bygones, and there's too many of a lot of stuff, but it is what it is. I had a lot of fun uh, and Crucible on this character. I'm really going to miss this character. This character's actually done more in the game than I think any of my other accounts have. So, Fire Team Medallion is your friend. For lore, just a little tip that I that I found out, and it could be coincidence, but it doesn't seem like it. If you're, and it worked on, uh, um, I was on, I think, week two, Titan was the flashpoint. I put on a ghost that had Titan scanner on, and I acquired four pieces of lore just out of normal, out of six chests. I opened six chests, acquired four pieces of lore, which were the last four pieces that I needed. It was Cade's lore, which is linked to Titan. So I'm not sure if you put a, a scanner on for a Dreaming City or a Tangled Shore, whether you would maybe get lore out of the normal chest, but it's definitely worth trying. Week two, I done my first solo 100k. 
and I I I beat a couple of the forges at this point, so I had the hammerhead. I didn't get a good roll on the hammerhead, but I got it. And because of what I was trying to achieve, I didn't actually farm for a better one. This was, I LFG'd a group to do the Malfeasance because I figured it's not something a lot of people are going to be soloing. I did solo on Xbox. And as you can see, I got a really good group who were maybe a bit too chill. Uh, beat all the forges. I, I beat three out of the four forges in week two. Uh, I got my Midnight Coup from my very first Leviathan finish. And I think it was week three, I got start of end, end of week two, start of week three, I can't remember now, that I got the Eye Killer shotgun. I also got Breakneck and Malfeasance at the exact same time. I got my four-piece invasion kill on my 40th match for the Breakneck, which was amazing, actually. It's almost unbelievable. As you can see, this is me collecting both of them. So, fire team medallion, really important. If you're going to make a second character... Now, I made a Warlock in week 3. And the Warlock ended up getting reasonably high from 48 hours of play. I'd basically done one set of Powerfuls. I didn't do any Iron Banner on the Warlock. Uh, so, I put the, the highest weapons I had on the Warlock and then farmed the... Tangled Shore and Dreaming City Lost Sectors because the blues drop as high as they can there. Blues will drop anywhere between 15 and 20 power levels below you. So you can keep farming them until you, you, you know, you get them at the highest that you can get them. Then do your powerful rewards. Once you do a powerful, it'll raise you two or three power levels. If you want to be as in-depth as I was, then I went and farmed more armor. And it raised me up another two power levels before I went and done another powerful. And that's how I managed to get my Warlock so high after 48 hours. Another thing I found was LFG. Uh, I hear a lot about LFG. I did have a really bad experience a long time ago with LFG where I joined a group. And they, as soon as I joined, they asked me to what was the shape of Italy. And I said, oh, that's a boot. And they kicked me. It was, it's funny now to think of it, but at the time I was really, really annoyed because it was just, why do that? It's the only bad experience I've had, and I always LFG from the same place. I always LFG on Bungie's app. Go to the fire teams, and if if you're unsure about playing with other people, you're unsure because you don't know if you know what you're doing, and you know loads of different factors come into play when you're playing with random players. Look for teams that are wanting a chilled group. What that basically means is they're not speedrunning it. They're not super confident. They might even be taking someone else through it that doesn't ha isn't totally comfortable with what they're doing. So if if you watch a video, if you research, you do know what you're doing. You've just never done it. So do yourselves a favor. Don't be worried about LFG and just pick the right team. Pick the right post. And this is where I got kind of a hero moment. My first completion of Last Wish on PlayStation, on this account, and I was the last guy standing with the orb. Perfect for the video. Uh, the guy that ran this this uh, fire team is a guy, I'm probably going to pronounce his game attack wrong, uh, Fai Sai. Such a, such a patient guy. He was running his younger brother through it. The whole team were really cool. We did have a, one guy who joined because somebody had to leave, and he done it... The, the, and I really don't like it when people come in and go, um, you know, if you fail once, you, uh, I, I can only stay for, for two runs because I've got stuff to do. And if you beat it, if it's not the boss, if you beat it, they're there for two hours. It's like, well, what about that thing you had to do? But he just left. He never even said anything. Uh, but we got, got another really cool member in and we got it done. And the boy, Faisai, was such a good Sherpa. Uh, that's why I'm shouting him out in the video. People like him exist. You're, you're not going to be always thrown into a group of people who are going to be moaning at you if you can't do it or if, you, you know, if you're struggling. Some people out there will actually teach you. Just pick the right post. Know what to do. Ten clears. Have emblem. Don't go into those groups if you don't know what you're doing. Even if you've watched the video, because those guys are interested in speedrunning it, most of the time, sometimes they put that and you go in and they haven't done it. They're just looking to get carried. So, 
Another thing I learned about this is there is a difference between being a solo player and a lone wolf. Because I pretty much got everything done that I wanted to get done in three weeks. Uh, some people are going to watch this and say that's because, you know, you're a good player or you've done it all. or Yeah, but I LFG'd everything. The only thing I didn't LFG was solo 100Ks because I do guides on them. So there's there are stuff available to show you how to get through it. I LFG'd everything else and met some incredibly nice, kind, polite uh, and helpful people. They're out there. There's no excuse for anybody not getting it done, getting any of it done. And the last kind of thing about about the LFG and the, the getting stuff done is structure your time. If you, if you can't get everything done because of family and work, then that means you're structuring your home time, which is great. That's perfect. Do the same with the game. I went in with a plan every time I went in, I had a goal. And I achieved the goal every day, just about. Do the same. Don't get caught up in that playing for the sake of playing if you have stuff you want to achieve. This is my character screen. So I did manage to get the Titan to 650. I was very lucky my crucible reset on the last day of the challenge, my daily. I had such a really bad competitive match and dropped, dropped the boots that I needed. Iron Banner in the final week gave me nothing. It gave me now the seven, seven bounties. I'd done all seven bounties and got four heavies. I don't know what I'd need with them because I'll, that filled up my heavies with 600, 650 heavies because the random number generator in this game gave me out of 13 rewards, gave me 9 heavies. That's nice. That's really random. My hunter, one week of playing, got him to 648. Uh, by using that method, by farming blues and doing that, you know, using the blues to get me up, putting on 650 or 600, 630 weapons, whatever the highest weapons I had were, and then farming blues to bring the armor up alongside it. And the warlock is actually 643. The sniper uh, is 649. If I'd put a 650 on, that puts the wallet to 643. And that was 48 hours it took me to do that. And the warlock had to play through the full campaign. I used the boost on the hunter to get the hunter up quickly. So as you can see, I got 31,100 triumph score. Three weeks. And I managed to actually snag quite a few exotics. I'm not saying that it's the people that are saying they can't get stuff done, it's it's all a fallacy, it's all a lie. I'm not saying that. Everybody has the different experiences. I totally understand that. This video was about me finding out how difficult Destiny 2 is to do, to actually play, and I found out it's not as difficult as I thought. It can be done, You it can be achieved by anybody. If you structure your time, if you're willing to listen, if you're willing to watch some videos as well, and you're willing to attack it uh, with a plan. Execute the plan and you will be fine. Seriously. I thought I'd finish the video with this uh, view. I've started the challenge when the dawn was on and I just loved this ornament. This, this video it, it, it's kind of rekindled my love for the game. Because it's, I was kind of maybe starting to feel a little bit burnt with the game and I wanted a new challenge. This has definitely reminded me it's a lot in Destiny to do. Okay, now Obi Lab's a bit of a damp squib. I thought it would be something more than a puzzle that nobody could solve because they hadn't given us the last hint. It's not my thing. Destiny, uh, Raid Secrets, they're, they're the think tank behind behind stuff like that. But... All in all, when you look at definitely since Warmind, Destiny 2 has been going in a good, a good place. Maybe maybe Black Armory's wandered off the reservation just a bit, but I like the idea of doling out content. I just feel like there's better ways to do it. You know, I feel like the content could have been delivered slightly better. Yeah, make it time-gated, but don't just go, there's the Bagusia Forge. Oh, yeah. The Jolton now drops randomly from a wee quest. Nice wee quest for it. Make it a little bit more difficult. Same as Limonarch. Make it a little bit more difficult. But uh, 
I have a feeling a lot of people are going to leave Destiny in the next couple of months. Content creators, streamers, blah, blah, blah. With Anthem coming out. I ain't going anywhere. My love for the game is as strong recording this as it was 2014 when I first put it on. And part of that reason, and maybe it's this dawning effect, <laughs> feeling all festive even though it's coming to the end of January, is you guys seeing the growth that my channels went through and seeing the love that I get on the channel. It's, it's amazing to think that I had 50 subs one, once and I thought it was the king of the world. Thank you very much for everybody that supported me. You, you, There's no words. There's no words I can say. There's no way I can uh, sh make you f or, or show you how I feel. It's very humbling, you know, to see that all, you know, might not look a lot to some people, but to me, you guys, you guys give me purpose. And I can never thank you enough for that. I will continue to try to deliver informative, friendly, helpful, nice content. The dream is to stream. The dream is to stream. Uh, maybe one day. But until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for being here for me in 2018. Hopefully 2019 is going to be a massive year for all of us. If you've enjoyed the content, if you want to see more kind of diverse content like this, leave me a comment, let me know. A like would be amazing because I did put a lot of effort into this, but more so, you viewing this is more than enough to steal Bife's line. Uh, thank you very much. I have no more words to say. <laughs> All the all the nightfalls that are out this week, I've already done solo hundred Ks on them, so check them out on the channel if 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 you need that. And until the next video, you guys take it easy. <laughs>